So hey guys, it's Zion again. Some more Black Ops 2. And in this gameplay, I'm playing a little bit different because I was going for the gold camo on the AN-94. And like you know, in Black Ops 2 and in most CODs, to get gold camo, you have to do a challenge of some kind. It was really simple in Modern Warfare 3. You just use the weapon a lot and you get to 31, you get gold camo, which was sort of stupid. You go back to Modern Warfare 2 where there was no gold camo, but you had to get a lot of headshots. Again, in COD 4, you had to get headshots and finish all the challenges with every weapon, which was essentially just getting headshots and kills. Here in Black Ops 2 and in the original Black Ops, if you wanted to get camos, you had to do challenges. Well, in Black Ops 1, you just had to buy them or get to Prestige 14. But again, in Black Ops 2, you have to do these insane challenges. And for this, long shots on the assault rifles are annoying. Mostly because of the maps. These maps are small by Black Ops standards, and there's not a lot of long sight lines. So getting long shots with an assault rifle is hard, especially when the long sight lines that do exist aren't technically long shots. And the long shot delineator, long shot definer in the game code, it's not really good. It, it, you have to be really, really long shots, and that's sort of stupid. But I wanted to talk briefly about the allure of gold camos and why we like it so much. Now I touched on this a little while ago and when I talked about COD challenges and what, what keeps us playing, but I want to talk specifically about why gold camos are so important to us. Well, first of all, gold is cool to look at. It's shiny, it's really, it, it's a nice color. It's got, this, it's got this shine, this shimmer to it. And especially for Treyarch games, the gold camo has always looked really good. I think the gold camo on the AK-47 in COD 4 was some of the best looking, but still, in Black Ops 1, those were some sexy gold camos on certain guns, like the FAMAS on drive-in looked like crap. But I think you get my... We like our guns to look sexy, because the stock gun, yeah, it looks cool, it sounds okay, it reloads nice, but, you know, we have the option of making it look cooler. And in a game like COD, where everything is a little more over the top, Especially with the new DLC, where you can be killed by dipping your toe in water. That's a little much, but here the Art of War camo. Who would put the Art of War on their gun? That is over the top, unnecessary, and redundant, because if you're a soldier, especially a soldier on the level of the Special Ops people in Black Ops 2, you already know the art of war. You know how to use height advantages. You know how to use all these tactics Sun Tzu put down. But it looks really cool. And we like to be able to show off to people. Because as humans, we are these very arrogant creatures thinking that we are the greatest thing since sliced bread on the individual and population level. And being able in Call of Duty to say to another player, look at what I did that you don't have, you stupid person is nice especially when we like to pub stomp pub stomping is the ultimate hedonist and self-centered thing putting together a team of people for the sole purpose of making someone else's day gaming bad that's just it's horrible and then you have youtube's trolling videos which ex exist solely to make someone else's day miserable to go onto a Call of Duty server or a match and to make sure that someone else is mad at you or to teabag someone or to troll someone or to make someone angry for the sake of humor. It's self-centered, it's selfish, it's hilarious, but on the whole, it's, it's not a really good thing to do as a person. But again, the internet gives us this anonymity and allows us to go around and do these really jackassy things. And then, of course, there's the idea that Treyarch said, all right, we have all these gold camos. What can we do further? And they put diamond in the game. Why? First of all, I mean, on a, on a, on a realistic level, realistic card, haha. It's stupid. You would never put anything of any real value on your gun. Well, the gun itself is quite valuable, but you wouldn't bling out your gun to say, yo, dog, I heard you like diamonds and bullets, so we put bullets in your diamonds and I don't do good exhibit off the cuff but again it's 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 over the top it's too much but this is COD and COD is all about the cinematic action movie super soldier over the top clown bleh. 
stuff that you want to do in a shooter. And so Treyarch putting Diamond Camo in the game, it gives you that extra incentive to go for gold guns. Because while in previous CODs, gold camo was essentially just a measure of time spent in game where headshots will happen, kills will happen, and, and you can change guns around a little bit to get gold camos quicker, it, it's mostly a measure of, alright, I've put an ungodly amount of hours into the game, I'm 14th prestige in Black Ops 1, I have a gold for months. Fantastic. You know, I, okay, so you have to spend 50,000 COD points. So, play for 10 hours in Domination, you'll get 50,000 COD points. Or go into a high roller wager match, you'll get 50,000 COD, whatever. Here in Black Ops 2, there is a goal beyond just the gold camo itself. The gold camo is the means to the diamond camo's end. Which I think is really interesting that they made gold camos not the final thing to do. And the main thing I love about Black Ops 2 Beyond the fact that the hit detection is terrible, these maps are not very good by Treyarch standards, the kill streaks are funky, and TDM could probably use its score per limit raise, is the incentive in everything. You have your diamond camos, you have the score streaks, you have the objective play, you have kill confirmed, you have domination, you have the pick 10 system, which is incentive to experiment. While, yes, there is a very strong loadout with Primary Gunfighter, Stock, Fast Mag Suppressor, Ghost, Hardline, Scavenger, and Tack Mask, yes, that is technically the most powerful setup on your Assault Rifle. The Pick 10 system gives you options you've never had before, and it is curiosity, an incentivized curiosity, to just try something. Put together a launcher-only class, simply because you can. And then, have the launcher on your back the whole game and go around knifing. I mean, that's part of That's in the Pick 10 system to make. Flak Jacket, Extreme Conditioning, Dexterity, and Scavenger, and the RPG. There's your rocket class. Go around and get a gold rocket simply because you can. There's incentive there, and you can get diamond launchers. Again, the diamond camo incentivizes playing differently. And that's one of the things in previous CODs that wasn't really there. There was no incentive to play any differently. Yes, you could get diamond, a golden AK-47, but once you got it, what else is there to do? You've done all, you've used all the weapons to go back to the M16 and the AK. You're done. Here in Black Ops 2, there are so many different ways to combine the class, even when there are very specific classes that work, like the ones I've stated before. And the fact that there are so many killstreaks, more than any other game besides the Modern Warfare 3, but without the support killstreaks here, and that there's challenges for each score streak, you want to get as many score streaks as you can because you want to try them all out. Yes, the swarm and the loads are in the dogs is the way to get big kills. And yes, that is sort of the YouTube thing, right? The 100 kill game with load star swarming dogs. But that's... it's silly, really. YouTube standards have always been silly. But all these score streaks, the, you have to play differently to use them. Not just to get them. You, you can get anything playing a certain way. And you can get anything playing in only one way, really. I, I, could, I could camp and get every single score streak, score streak in the game. But, if I want to use the Guardian, I have to think. If I want to use the Hellstorm Missile, I have to think. If I want to use the Sentry Gun, alright. Where can I put it that it won't be easily EMP'd? You have people like the Worm that Thunder's done, who have completely revolutionized what it means to camp. Where, where else but in Black Ops 2 would someone think so hard as to revolutionize what it means to camp with trophy systems, claymores, an assault shield, an LMG, and a Remington? <laughs> Where else would you be incentivized to do that in TDM? The choices in this game are endless, which is important. And there's always something on the horizon that you can aim for. In the previous CODs, once you'd gotten gold on everything, once you'd gotten all, unlocked all the kill streaks and found out what you wanted to do with your gameplay, you were done. You know, you played a certain way, maybe you changed guns once in a while, but you were essentially done with your experimentation. Here in Black Ops 2, I cannot imagine that all the combinations of effective loadouts has been reached. And even if your loadout isn't effective, if it's fun to use and you get laughs using it, by all means use it. Because if this is the last COD, 
that we see successful, we need to have fun.